Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah, and today I am with my big brother, Pastor Morgan Roders. What's Woo! up? And we have a very special guest, oh, yes. Miss Ravel Roders. Yes, or Mrs. Yes. Yes. Married mm-hmm. to Morgan. So this is Morgan's wife. So how long have you guys been married for? Ooh, two, two years, years and, and seven, seven months, months and, and one day. One day. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know it's love. They they even know. Well, their wedding was June seventh, yep. mm-hmm. and it's January eighth. So mm-hmm. yeah, two yep. years, seven months, one day. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it's just cool because we did a podcast with them back in. Let's see when that was. That was March 9th It came out. So that was of last year, episode 45. So go check that out. It's called Mo and Vel's Love Story, Redemption, Courting, Boundaries, and Marriage. So I'll put that in the description below. But today we're going to do more of a Q&A. And Morgan and Vel have no idea at all what I'm going to be asking them. <laughs> so it's going to be fun. Um, we're going to be asking them questions about boundaries, courting, um, premarital counseling that's a big thing that they've gone through and they've also done with um, a couple and then Morgan was able to marry them Mm -hmm. so we are going to go through all of that in a quick podcast so it's gonna be fun we're gonna do short little answers but praying that you guys are blessed by this episode and Mm -hmm. before we get started Morgan would you like to pray for us yep let's pray Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for this time. Thank you, God, that we get to uh, glorify you in all our relationships, whether we're single, whether we're married, whether we're um, a son or a daughter or a mother or a father. Thank you, God, that we can uh, just do everything as unto you. And I pray that you would use this podcast to bless people and to um, give them maybe some more insight or some wisdom and I know it's not it's not from us, but it's because of you, God. And so I just pray that you would uh, lead us by your Holy Spirit, that you would fill us right now, and that the people listening, that it wouldn't just be their physical ears open, but their spiritual ears, uh, just letting letting in your truth, God, letting it change your hearts and uh, change your minds, uh, as long as it's according to your truth and your will. And so we just give you this time and we ask that you lead us right now. And it's in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. So I will just, let's just get into it. Let's start mm-hmm. with the question. So um, the first question is, how do I deal with haunting, sometimes unanswerable questions such as, is there something wrong with me or am I not married because of my past mistakes? Who mm. wants that one? Mm. That's a big one. But it can be quick. Go you and then me. Yeah, or sh- let's do that. We'll mm. start with the head. Morgan. <laughs> Haunting. Mm. Uh, well, I think, like, what? what's an example of that? So like I if someone's out it. there saying, am I just not married because there's something wrong with me or because of my past? Mm. Like, why am I not married? Mm. Well, I think it's a good, it's a good idea to get uh, wise counselors mm. around you. Yep. So that you're not just dealing with your own thoughts and dealing with your own insecurities and worries, but that you're asking godly people, may hopefully people in the church, yeah. uh, people, hopefully your parents are godly. Sometimes they're not, so you have to look somewhere else. But to have godly friends and family that you can ask those things and you can ask the hard questions like, do you think I'm doing this right? Or mm. how should I change this? Mm-hmm. Because sometimes, yeah, we maybe there are problems, but we yeah. don't see it. Mm-hmm. And if we're just constantly uh, worrying, then we're not really dealing with it. So it's good to ask, have those wise counselors around you. Yeah. Uh, what's that verse in Proverbs? Oh, uh, the multitude. Yeah, there's wisdom. Yeah, there's wisdom in it. So, yeah. yeah, I think that's a good first step. Because if you are concerned, you'll probably just keep worrying if you mm-hmm. just keep it to yourself. So yeah, yeah. ask people, you know, yeah. people that you trust. Yeah, mm-hmm. and ask the Holy Spirit. I mean, the Holy Spirit can see things that we don't see, and mm-hmm. it can see things even that other people can't see, because we can even be hiding things. So yeah. just ask the Holy Spirit, as we're teaching the youth kids in Galatians five sixteen to walk by the Spirit. Yeah, and so that you don't. Uh, fulfill the lust of the flesh so maybe one of those things you're like did i do something wrong or am i living in sin or doing this or that 
we'll ask the Holy Spirit. And then yeah. Galatians 5, I think it's 25, that says to keep in step with mm. the Spirit. So, yeah. 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 By you, Val? Yes, amen. Um, I think I was thinking about how it's important to not be focused on marriage so much, like yeah. as why am I not married? But instead, God, is there anything I'm mm. doing that's grieving you? And that's yeah. it. We don't even need to focus on marriage necessarily. Mm-hmm. And um, just pray Psalm 139, like those last verses. Search me, O God, and know my heart. See if there's any wicked way within me. And, and see if there's anx- any anxious thoughts um, about marriage. <laughs> and yeah. lead mm-hmm. me in the way of everlasting. That's what it's about, is everlasting life. Mm-hmm. So just focusing yeah. on that. And if it's God's will for you to get married, then as you let him refine you, then you will be that spouse to yeah. that person. Mm-hmm. Amen. And you Amen. have the perfect story of redemption, like God to confess your sins to one another so that you might be healed. And yeah. you had to give up marriage. Like even the mm-hmm. the fact that you were of like your past and stuff, you're like, okay, God, it's okay if I don't. Mm-hmm. And it's cool how God brought you and Morgan together. Mm-hmm. So you guys, again, mm-hmm. go back and watch um, their story mm-hmm. of redemption. Mm-hmm. And God can do that for you too. Amen. Mm-hmm. So the second one is if God is really all I need, then why do I still yearn for something more? Which is saying like as in marriage. Um, The Bible says Genesis 2.18, it's not good for man to be alone. It talks about that. Mm -hmm. The other thing it says is Proverbs 18.22, he who finds a wife finds a good thing or obtains favor from the Lord. And then 1 Timothy 4.3, it says, um, they forbid people to marry and order them to abstain from certain foods, which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and who know the truth. For everything God created is good and nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving. So long, that was a long question. But basically, (laughs) if God is really all I need, should I get married? Is it wrong? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that before even you get married, you have to find your rest in God. You know, Mm -hmm. I who said it they said that saint your heart is restless saint augustine, until, I think. Saint augustine? Saint augustine? Yeah. yeah. so your heart is restless until you find your rest in him and mm-hmm. we're always going to be discontent if we aren't in christ you know mm-hmm. if we aren't giving our hearts to him so that means that marriage isn't going to fix that Amen. marriage is gonna it might help for a moment but that that's kind of it's kind of like when you buy a new car you know it's like Hey, it satisfies your desire for a new car, but it only lasts a couple of days, right? Yeah. And it, and so if you, marriage without Christ is going to do the same thing mm-hmm. because Christ is supposed to be the center of that relationship. And I think, um, what was, the, uh, was there another part to that question? What was it? Like basically, is it wrong to get married? If, yeah. Because is no. that showing that you're not content in Christ? Another no. question was, yeah. does, it, does being content mean I have to relinquish my desire to marry? No, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a natural thing, you know, God God encourages marriage, but then mm-hmm. we also see Paul say, "Hey, you know, you, you can be content without being married too." Mm-hmm. So, I don't it's not a wrong thing, um but as long as we're not thinking that that's the goal. Because yeah. what I tell people who want to be married all the time, I say, "Well, in heaven there's not going to be marriage, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. We're all going to be so so close that we don't even need marriage. We're going to be yeah. that unified. So yeah. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, exactly. And to go along with that, I was just thinking about how Paul talks about, I have learned to be content when mm. I have a lot, mm-hmm. when I have a little. And at the end, of his conclusion is, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So mm-hmm. whether God calls you to marriage or whether he calls you to singleness, you can do that for his glory and you can by his grace and his strength. And the purpose of marriage isn't just for our needs to be met yeah. or to feel content, but it's for the purpose of bringing God glory and the purpose yeah. to um, reflect us being the bride and Jesus being our bridegroom. Mm-hmm. And it's also to do ministry together wherever God has called yeah. you to do that. So, um, yeah, so marriage isn't bad. It's a blessing. Mm-hmm. It's a good thing. Yeah. Um, but if you take the Lord out of it, then it's not a good thing. Amen. Yeah, I think marriage, it'll grow you and it'll teach you a lot more. And, and I think of, you know, the love chapter, 1 Corinthians 13. It says, mm-hmm. love is patient and kind. Mm-hmm. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. So if you keep looking at those things, if it doesn't insist on its own way, then a lot of people come thinking what can i get out of this marriage yeah. and that's why so many marriages uh, end up in divorce but this one says it's not irritable or resentful 
it doesn't insist on its own way so it's not selfish mm -hmm. but so i think yeah as long as you have you're gonna have that desire you know you're gonna have that desire to marry some people maybe don't but that's a small small yeah. and you know it's a minority of but people if you but you don't this is it's sad when people are like oh i don't want to get married it's because they want to be selfish they don't want to have to take care of someone else mm -hmm. but they're still struggling with you know they still like fornicate mm -hmm. they'll look at pornography they'll masturbate no then you mm -hmm. really aren't doing well because yeah. you're still committing adultery to christ and mm -hmm. it's still a sin yeah and i so another thing that um kind of goes alongside of it with it is well shouldn't I just get married, like, or can I get married if, like, I'm struggling with fornicating or masturbation or pornography? What would your advice to be to couples if they're living together? Let's just say they're living together. Because you guys have done marriage counseling, with pe like, with people. What would you say to them? Hmm. Like, if, should they if get... If they're living? Yeah, if they're living together, fornicating, or if the guy say, is struggling with pornography. Well, I would say? say if it's built on that foundation that you... You don't want just like, oh, okay, let's just make it better by getting married. I think yeah. separate, you know, mm -hmm. stop living together, seek the Lord, and then, you know, get right with God because you're living in sin. Mm -hmm. So get right with him get for a time and, you know, yeah. and not for just the time, but like before you guys get back together to, to start out on a good foundation, you know. So yeah. sometimes people, you know, they're like, oh, I have to get married. We're pregnant and... But I don't even see technically where where it says that in the Bible. Where, mm -hmm. oh, well, we did something wrong, so we have to get married right away. It's like, yeah, two wrongs no, you can get right. Yeah, two two wrongs don't make it right. So, and that one can be, you know, there's certain situations. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, a lot of times people think, oh, yeah. I can fix it by just getting married. And but you need to, you know, like some people think that with pornography. Yeah. They think. Well, once I get married, then better. I won't have to struggle. Mm. It's like, no, mm -mm. a lot of people think that, but they still continue in pornography because they didn't deal with it before yeah. they got yeah. married. So, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's good. And I was listening to this podcast with um, Pastor JP, and he was saying people think like if they struggle with masturbation, like marriage is going to fix that. And mm -hmm. he said, think about it. What if it's almost harder because like you're married and so you want to do those things like that's in your mind but your spouse is asleep or, mm -hmm. you know, they're not there. You're on a trip. You'll struggle with those things. Or you get old and or you, you don't get look old. as and so it's like <laughs> Exactly. And it's like, what are you living for? Are you living for the pleasures of this life? Is that why you're getting married? To feel those feelings? Because because the one verse says in 1 Corinthians 7, 2, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. But in 1 Corinthians 7, it's also talking about for those people who are engaged like if you mm -hmm. are with that person so it's like they already know those people are living for god like they've already put them together then it's like marry them but the sad thing is people have fornicated with someone who isn't a believer mm -hmm. or doesn't know the lord and they start a covenant right mm -hmm. but they're mm -hmm. just wanting it contractual like you scratch my back i'll scratch yours you do this for me i'll do this for you mm -hmm. instead of understanding the covenant of marriage mm -hmm. and like you were saying val the picture that it is and how beautiful mm -hmm. it is but why do so many marriages end in divorce over 50% and it's like it's going up like yeah. every year? Mm. It's because people are living together before they're married. Mm -hmm. Statistics, mm -hmm. worldly statistics show. Yeah, cohabitation yep. yeah. doesn't work. Because yeah. it shows you're not willing to wait for them yeah. and you're basically cheating on them because they're not your spouse yeah. yet mm -hmm. so and then also really quick you have to be willing to lay that person down if for those couple for couples who are living together yeah. you need to be willing to lay that person down for the sake of getting right with god amen and mm -hmm. they're not even they shouldn't even be like the reason why you're laying yeah laying them down like it should be for the sake of getting right with god and then whether you are with them or not that's up to the lord amen because mm -hmm. first corinthians 6 9 says or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of god do not be deceived neither the sexual and immor immoral which is fornication you know um nor idolaters nor adulterers nor men who practice homosexuality and the list goes on will inherit the kingdom of god mm -hmm. so we need to take that serious yeah and we need to understand that all those sexual sins or so many other ones, they're all, I like, it's all a sin that is worthy of, like, if we're practicing it, like, we're blatantly in it, it's all worthy of hell. Mm -hmm. So we need to understand that, take it serious. Like you said, Val, don't be doing it for a person. 
like, oh, I get all fixed so I can get married, but do it for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because there's no marriage in heaven. We're all going to be married to the Lord. Mm -hmm. So why are we worrying about that? And Mm -hmm. if God brings it together, like the verse, let no man separate. Like, let God do it. Let everyone else say, hey, this should, this is good because you're, you're running for God. You're running for God. Mm -hmm. And like you said, it's going to be a beautiful ministry opportunity where Mm -hmm. two are better than one. So, Mm -hmm. um, so the next one kind of goes with that. How active should i be in the process of finding a spouse or should i leave it all up to god so i feel like Mm -hmm. for girls it's different than guys yeah because girls should wait a little bit more i don't think they really have to do much or anything but for morgan we'll have you answer it first Hmm. should guys be active in the process of finding a spouse or should you just leave it all up to god and like what did you do yeah well i think uh i always like that analogy of uh you're running right you're running this race for for the lord Mm -hmm. and every once in a while you can look over and see if someone's up there with you you know like if so i'm running doing doing god's will and uh living for him and then every once in a while you can look over but you're still running right it's not like you just stop because Mm -hmm. sometimes people just they they're running but then they're like well, let me stop, find a spouse, and then I'll I'll pursue God. Mm. But I think a good thing to do is to to run and for guys to look over and if some if there's a woman who is is there and they're you're equally yoked with them, then you can start pursuing them, you know, in a godly way and start uh seeing if they really love the Lord, if they're consistently going to church, if mm. they're committed to Christ. And you can see that, but Sadly, it seems like uh, in our culture, it seems like more the women pursuing guys yeah. now. Yeah. I'm not saying everywhere, but I think sad- sadly, a lot of guys are too afraid to pursue, too afraid of commitment. Mm-hmm. And so that's its own problem. But yeah, I think the, the man is supposed to be looking out. But also the women should be ready for, you know, when someone, <laughs> like in the old days, say, call on them, right? Yeah. When they say, hey, can I court you? Like I did with you, Val. Yeah. And when we do that, then the women, woman has to be ready, you mm-hmm. know? How am I going to respond? And so I think the the woman has to be looking out and seeing, well, if this person did ask me, like, how should I, do, how should mm-hmm. I respond? And, uh, and preparing for that. But we shouldn't just be so worried. So I like I tell Mariah that like, don't pursue guys. You know, like be be looking for what you want, and have those standards, mm-hmm. so that when someone does ask you, you know, like how to respond. Yeah. But you know, I I pray for a man of God to pursue my sister, mm-hmm. right? And not in a manipulative way, not in a mm-hmm. way that is creepy or anything like that, mm-hmm. but in a godly way, mm-hmm. and to yeah. be that man to take that step of faith. And uh, to have that commitment, so yeah, yeah. I definitely had my eye on you, for <laughs> sure. And yeah. um, I was just thinking when you were talking about how I experienced two types of pursuit. Mm-hmm. The first one with my old relationship was forceful and yeah. manipulative mm-hmm. and selfish, yeah. and then I saw the other way of pursuit from you, and mm-hmm. I just th- thought of the word steadfast, which is steadfast and selfless, mm-hmm. and um, wanting what's best for me and for mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. relationship with God, but. Um, and so it's just such a beautiful contrast, and I love how God is able to use mm. the yeah. bad for me to be able to um, just made me appreciate and be more so much more thankful for the way that you pursued me. But yeah, I definitely had my eye on you. <laughs> and something I would suggest for girls is if you're thinking about somebody and you are kind of freaking out, like, why haven't they texted me or why aren't they talking to me? Pray for them and pray about that and give mm-hmm. it to the Lord, and that's the best way that you can love someone. And also... I was thinking about how like I loved getting to know you and just like Hmm. being just getting to know you as a brother in Christ. Like even if nothing, even if marriage wasn't a Mm -hmm. result, I I knew when I met you, I was like, oh, I want to know this. I want to know this man, even if he's just a friend, Mm -hmm. even if he's just my brother in Christ, because he loves the Lord and he really spurs me on to love God. Mm -hmm. And so that's where it was. And then I was just, of course, I was attracted to you and am. Mm -hmm. So then I was like, okay, Lord, like, and I remember I prayed, I said, okay, God, if it's your will, could I marry Morgan? But if not, that's okay. I just want to know him as a brother in Christ. And the Lord um, was very gracious, and he allowed us to get married. And I'm very mm-hmm. thankful. And I remember yeah. that night when you reached out to me, and you told me you, you liked me, and mm-hmm. told you I liked you. And then the beautiful thing is you said that 
um, that foundation at the beginning. Yeah. Whereas I don't yeah. want to be a distraction Amen. from yeah. your relationship with God. And I don't want you to put me before God. And, yeah. and if that happens, yeah. this can't work. And so that yeah. was, yeah. He was willing mm-hmm. to also give it to God. Like if God did, you guys were engaged and it was around your birthday. So around what, almost three, oh, yeah. three years ago, um, oh. where you guys like, didn't break it off but you're just like hey let's just we're not really going to talk we're gonna give this time to the lord and ask the lord should we be together to fast about it and pray and it wasn't because we were mad at each other it wasn't because we were like doubting the relationship we just were like hey you know if this is god like why would we we be afraid of asking the lord hey we just want to really make sure that we are on the right path Mm -hmm. and to and so vel was like hey can we just take a day to fast and pray and, and mm-hmm. see. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. And yeah. so we took that day. We didn't, you know, we didn't, we weren't texting and calling. We just were praying and asking the Lord. And, mm. uh, and we, you know, I felt that he you. said yes and <laughs> you did too. And <laughs> mm. now we're married. So Amen. Yeah, Amen. praise God. Um, and I love this verse. It's in Psalm 112, starting verse six. It says, surely the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever They will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts Mm. are steadfast, like you said Mm. about Morgan, trusting in the Lord. Their hearts are secure. They will have no fear. And in the end, they will look in triumph on their foes. So I Mm. just love that because it's like that's how we should be, not afraid of bad news, right? Because that could have been bad news. You you could have been, he could have been very afraid of doing that. Morgan didn't really know if I liked him or not because everybody (laughs) would keep it from you. They would all tell me, (laughs) but... Yeah. yeah they didn't tell you and <laughs> it's not like we we did that uh during uh what was that an engagement period because uh we didn't pray about it before it's like no mm-hmm. we prayed about it before we just you know we just really wanted to make sure that because yeah it's really important it's one of the biggest commitments of your life and uh and i think I think that's why a lot of people are afraid, but you don't have to be afraid as long yeah. as you're doing things according to God's will. So, But until yeah. you say, I do, you're not together. You're not yeah, married. My dad always married. says, you should yeah. be willing to walk away right before you say, I do, or sign the marriage yeah. um, certificate. Like, you can walk away. My dad has said, too, like, even if you were to walk away on the day, you've spent all the money, you've done all this stuff, the dress, everyone's there. My dad's like, I'll take care of it for you. Don't worry. Mm-hmm. And, like, if you have any fear, any doubt. It would be better because... to just not get married <laughs> yeah. than get, Ask these questions get divorced before. in a couple Amen. Years. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I'll read it some other podcast, but there was when Oswald Chambers, if you guys have My Utmost for His Highest, it's January 2nd was the day, and it talks about if there's any doubt, any fear, mm. don't go about it, like, a, yeah. like going about something like that, especially marriage. That is a huge, like, covenant it's a big deal yeah um people are going into it so flippantly because they want the house they want the children they want the wedding and all this stuff that's why i also encourage people don't put a lot into the wedding like money like i love how you guys did it It was just at the church very simple but it's still very beautiful everyone else helped out but it wasn't like to where if god told you on the day this isn't the time it wouldn't like crush your guys's finances or (laughs) stuff it so I, that's just, yeah, just I think know. it's just, don't just get married because that's, everyone else is getting married just because, yeah, you're missing out hey, from yeah, it. I'm, oh, I'm getting old or I want to have kids because mm. and I think a verse to go with this is Proverbs 21, 9. It is better to live in a corner of a housetop <laughs> than in a house shared Amen. with a quarrelsome wife. Amen. So basically you could take that any direction. You could say it's better, you know, to yeah, to be alone than with a, a man who said they were a Christian, but he wasn't really a Christian. Once you married him, he just completely changed. Hmm. And and some people are like, but how do I know that? Well, pray, ask the Holy Spirit, spend that time, go through marriage counseling, and don't don't just say, oh look, they're godly, and just get married right away. Sometimes that works for people, but some people, you ha- it takes time to see their re- their real true colors come out so yeah like your dad always says like see if it can stand the test of time Mm -hmm. and that's why he wanted us to be um courting slash engaged for at least a year yep and so we kind of pushed it it was like 11 months i mean 11 months and a few days but um, (laughs) we started courting (laughs) at the end of june got married at the beginning of june June. so yeah. yeah 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 and i love um 
just how my dad like always explains to is like that's why you guys should be serving together in ministry together mm-hmm. like stalking them in a way <laughs> yeah. to where you guys can just see how they respond to other mm-hmm. things or different people yeah. and you guys become like best friends like mm-hmm. you yeah. guys were best friends and i love mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. and think that's how it should be is like Stop. why all these people don't really know they know all these like weird stuff because they go on a date like what's your favorite color what's your favorite food which uh, that's cutie tutsy stuff, but <laughs> it's not like <laughs> actual things that are gonna yeah, stand I don't against even feel fire. Like I'm that good at that. Yeah, stuff, he's like, I know. I didn't even know how, how old you that was. <laughs> <laughs> but no. that's not important that was to me. 23. Just the fact yeah. that you spur me on to yeah. love God and Amen. you yeah. sharpen me. That's, you might that's not all win marriage trivia, but you guys have a strong marriage. <laughs> <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> yeah. You would. Yeah. I think you would. <laughs> but um, the other question was on the long the lines of um, how do I like pursuing someone but how do I let people know? So this is kind of how it went. So how do I send a message to someone in my life that I'm interested in pursuing a romantic relationship with them? Um, and what if, but what if they don't like me? So I think it went along the along the lines with the verse Proverbs um, 112, mm-hmm. yep. because it's like, sometimes you have to be willing to hear bad news. So when do you think it gets to the point where, because this person's probably always talking about the person, they like them, but they're just assuming, because I've done that, with people i mean mm-hmm. that just happened to me recently and i asked the person i found out um no like they said like i do, like this isn't gonna work out mm-hmm. and it crushed me but i was so happy i found yeah. that out freedom instead of being like let on and not knowing yeah. so what do you guys think with that yeah is it okay i to think ask? like do you like yeah me? i think um i think as the, the man you know to mm-hmm. ask that too um yeah. because especially if you're gonna pursue that person like, like for Vel, I didn't even really know if she liked me yet. Like mm-hmm. some people would tell me she does, but then other people who were close to her were like, oh, I don't know. Like they were <laughs> trying to hide it from me. But I told her, I was like, hey, I like you, Vel, you know. And then she responded with, hey, I like you too, you know. And then we started courting that night. And I think, yeah, <laughs> I, I believe that we have to <laughs> make sure that we're not afraid of bad news because what I tell Mariah, I'm like, why would you want to marry a person mm. who doesn't like you? Bad you know, time. like, yeah, you, it's like, <laughs> I really like you. It's like, you like them. Yeah, you like they them, good but they don't like you. So like... why would you want to marry that person? And I know there's some marriages that have worked that maybe way, like, at, which initially yeah. they didn't Jeez. look look at each other that way or only one side did. And then, but then God changed their heart or God, mm-hmm. you know, revealed things. Or we always say but, like, they didn't mean it or that's, it's yeah. like, no, don't try to fill in the blanks. Just yeah. I it. just, I don't like to just force relationships and, and that's what it seems like a lot of people want to do because they're yeah. like, oh, that's the perfect man or that's the perfect woman. Yeah. So I have to, I need that person. But no, it's that, that's not going to be God's best for you, especially if they don't like you. You want a marriage where you're attracted to each mm-hmm. other too. I know that yeah. seems superficial, but if but not just attractive uh, physically, but spiritually and emotionally and all those different aspects. So, yeah, yeah I think, uh, yeah. You shouldn't I, be trying to force it like, oh, I will make no. them like me. Like, if only they get to know me and they really knew. It's like, no, like, don't yeah. worry about that. And I think it's all right to ask, you know. Yeah, I think and, you should. Especially if, because with my family, especially if yeah. your family's getting involved. And exactly. then they're like. If it's a, becoming a distraction. Exactly. Or like if it's weighing on you. Amen. And some people, like, they, it's almost as if there was a breakup, but they were never with that person. <laughs> yeah. Because in their mind, their whole family and everyone's like, yeah. oh, yeah, like, let's set this Planning up. Planning the wedding. Just Planning the wedding. Like, putting your first name with their last name. Yeah. Thinking, yeah. But in yeah. little things, like I've had this with friends too, like, oh, they did this. They said this about me or just they, you can, in your mind, you can make something up. Like, but committed. sometimes you it's, have to tell them too yeah, because they don't know someone, don't know you know, there's, a, there's people who like me, but they didn't ask me. Um, but I had to tell them because I felt like I'm just trying to be a godly just man. Be a just I'm trying to be a nice on. friend yet. They think of me as more than a friend. So I'm like. Oh man, I don't want this to get messy. So you have to, Tell them. and it's already probably got messy in their mind. They mm-hmm. just see you as a different person. They see you as their husband, <laughs> you know. But you I had mind. to tell them, and it's hard, and they they're kind of in denial, or they're like, "Blessed to like you," or well, "I didn't like you anyway." Like, or yeah, 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 yeah. Y- you could get that. So don't mm-hmm. be. Hurt. You have to be careful because if you're like 
if you're probably for like, oh, every woman likes me, so I have no. to tell them no. No, it's not about that. But if you see that they're really being led on or if you hear things like that, then mm-hmm. you have to maybe clarify some things in love. Yeah. So. And like it talks about in Proverbs, like, um, like how does it say? Better are the wounds of a friend mm-hmm. than the kisses of an enemy. So like it would be hard to say that to those people, but that's the the most loving thing to do so that they're not dwelling on that anymore. Yeah. And then they have mm-hmm. to, they have the truth. So then they can deal with yeah. that with God. And that's not your responsibility. You can yeah. just pray for them. But some people even like when people like them and they don't want to tell them they don't like them because they like the attention. Yeah. Um, and that's or like, kiss the, about it yeah. And that's like kisses of an enemy. Like that's really hurtful for them in the long run. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And I think like for me, I, I would just rather, um, like get it out and like let's just ask and like see that but we have to make sure we're led by the holy spirit how to say it when to say it (laughs) but um i do think it is important though because i think satan likes to work in the darkness and Mm -hmm. if there's not miss there's not communication so like for us we have a young adults group and a lot of us are single Mm -hmm. and i was saying i think it's good for some of us to be like hey if we kind of are feeling like you like us but we know we don't just to respect them, say, I really want to be your brother or sister in Christ and your friend. Yeah. So I'm just letting you know I don't see anything in the future, like, romantically <laughs> or just, <laughs> yeah. like, going anywhere. But know you're a great person. Like, sandwich it. Like, give them encouragement. Yeah. Say the hard thing and encourage them. Yeah. But make it clear. And it's going to be awkward. It's it going to be uncomfortable at times. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying you have to do this at least for you every person. Leading that them on or, every. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm not saying for the guys you have to do that with every girl that yeah. walks into the church or something. Yeah, hey, I don't like you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, but no. You do. Ha- you just have to be careful if you see that it's becoming a bigger thing to them. Then you know, ask. And so you can do Lord, ministry together and serve. How can I talk yeah. with them about this? Amen. Mm-hmm. Or um, and and bring someone out. You know, yeah. you could bring someone else too. Trusted friends. As friend. long as it's not just like shaming them or something. Mm-hmm. Like, how could you like me? No. It shouldn't be like that. You know. Like so. my mom always says, like you're a good godly person. Like that's a compliment that they yeah. like you so don't mm-hmm. yeah we'd always say that to morgan but now he's taken <laughs> <laughs> but um so i'm just gonna do one more question and then we're kind of getting into like the premarital counseling and just some things to go over but um oh, this one is a weird one it says how do you know they're they are the one unless you kiss them because there's a weird <laughs> thing that people think that unless That's you kiss funny. them unless you live with them is another thing mm-hmm. um unless you do certain things like that to them is compatibility Mm -hmm. um so what would you say to those people who say like i don't feel like i'm going too far because we're like not having sex Mm. but what would you say to those people of why because you guys didn't kiss until your wedding day Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. was it worth the wait and why do you not have to kiss to know they're the one yeah Yeah, Mm -hmm. it was worth the wait definitely Mm -hmm. because if i kissed bell like it would have been so much harder for me to not to not push the boundaries and not to go further with anything because Mm -hmm. kissing like i know it might yeah it might be weird to people it does it it prepares your body for sex so god made the kiss yeah he made our bodies (laughs) yes he did so so we didn't even want to mess with that even though we did we wanted to in our flesh yeah but we're saying you know we want to get to know each other even without the sexual part right and of course that's a that's a part of marriage, but that's not the only part. And so that we need to make sure, because what if on your wedding day, something happened mm. and you guys got married, but you weren't able to have sex. You weren't yeah. able to kiss or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. And that, that happens. Yeah. 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 Mariah just this told me a lady, story about that. So. In Hawaii um, with her husband on their honeymoon. And I think they were in the ocean. She got crashed by a wave. And I think it was only a few days of them being married, and she was a quadriplegic. Mm. So he had to take care of her. Mm-hmm. And he, yeah, but it's like, yeah, she doesn't feel anything down there, like anything like that. But she, they still have to understand it's not about it's for better, for worse, for sickness exactly. and in health. Like it's this covenant. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. so beautiful. But um, what would you say with that, Val? Because what if? Yeah. They're quote unquote, the world says, what if they're a bad kisser? <laughs> and all this, I think it's scary if they're a good kisser because how many people have yeah. their lips touched? Yeah. But anyway, that one. Yeah, it's like, where are your priorities? Mm. Like, are your priorities on how good of yeah. a kisser your spouse is going to be or how much they're going to be able to, like, how good of a leader they're going to be, like, mm-hmm. leading you spiritually? So it's like, yeah, where are your priorities? And um, that's the world standards. Nowhere mm-hmm. does it say. Yeah. In the Bible, your husband needs to be a good kisser or your wife and needs to be a good kisser. I mean, 
yeah it should be it sh- it's not going to be perfect you should it, learn right together in the yeah. Yeah, yeah because i mean life. it's it's fun because it's a it, that means that that area of your relationship can grow, grow. Yeah. yeah it's not like it's okay wow that was it you know that was the best thing and no but it's like it goes uphill yeah, only uphill it, from it, there it, yeah, yeah it just gets better and better yeah, exactly and yeah. a lot of people yeah a lot of times things don't work <laughs> yeah. you know things are yep. awkward but you know god god can help you and he can mm-hmm. make those things <laughs> and make those things work yeah. exactly. and l- allow you guys to grow even in that so. yeah, yeah exactly and like I s- we said earlier god made our bodies so he's mm-hmm. the one that can make things work and yeah. so if that's really an issue in your relationship in your marriage yeah, no, pray about it and god mm-hmm. can work it out and i shared this in the last podcast one of my friends she was um we were talking about courting and what that looks like and she's asking me like but how did you get to how do you get to know morgan like without being able mm-hmm. to be alone with him and or without like and we were talking about um that funny statistic like you're what's the thing oh, we were yeah. talking about last night if you're not with if <laughs> if a man's not with the woman then there's a lot. Of, there's a lot less chance of being sexually active. <laughs> like, like, uh, it's yeah. like yeah, uh, yeah. So, common sense. Yeah, and like sex is meant to like meant to bring two people together in marriage, especially like when time. Like somebody talked to talk to me about it. They say like when times get tough, it's like, well, the Holy Spirit is, but it's like the glue that keeps you together, and it's like, mm-hmm. and that's not always the, that's not always true. But I that was a funny picture, and mm-hmm. um, and so like. We don't need to. We don't need to worry. Um, I just lost my train. Yeah, God's so. gonna <laughs> take care of that. Yeah, he's yeah. gonna. He's gonna bring you two together. Yeah. And yeah, I like how you said that. That's not the. That's not where you're getting married for, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. Oh, I remember I what I was gonna say. You um, remember? Yes. It chugged, it chugged, choo chooed away, and then it came back. <laughs> um, but oh, I chugged, 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 chugged. Sounds like no, you don't need to say Wait. This. Okay, so. It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> there's a statistic that shows. Well, I think it was not statistics, but um, the this one guy who was saying 06 percent of your marriage is like sex, and mm-hmm. he's like, there's ninety nine point four percent that you have to figure out the rest. Mm-hmm. He's like, but you base it off mm-hmm. of that, and it's not as good as it was anymore. Stuff, then that's why marriages fail, and but, that's why people yeah. commit adultery. And mm-hmm. it's and so you're sad. talking about your friend who's saying, how do you get to know him without yeah. that? But sex you know that can actually distract you if you guys you know just started dating and then you're engaging (laughs) and all that then you're gonna you're gonna forget about all the other stuff you're not really gonna yeah you might just be together for sex it's like that's not really getting to know the person you can get to know you get a lot more talking time Mm. without kissing without sex (laughs) without all that all that stuff exactly what i was gonna say is that it's meant to numb the mind like it Mm. can numb your mind like when times get tough like in marriage like i believe that's something that god blessed um couples with so that like i don't know i don't know how to explain exactly what i'm trying to say when things get stressful yeah yeah. like it's just a it's just a blessing and so but anyways but it it's meant to like numb the mind like a lot of people say like i didn't i just lost control yeah. you know because your brain your your decision maker basically shuts off so when <laughs> when you um when you're getting to know someone if you have that involved then it's like you're, you're so focused, focused on that yeah. and you don't have that it's just like you said morgan it's a distraction it yeah. takes away from the focus of getting to know them spiritually mm-hmm. mentally emotionally and physically can be after yeah. and then you'll still get to continue getting to know them in yeah. those things as well yeah. and then you're gonna miss how like if it's a bad person you're gonna miss yep. uh, how bad those people yeah. are you know and how you shouldn't like, be how with did them. I not see that think, like, well but right. we have a good time in this area mm. but no it's, it's that's why people say like kiss and make up you have a fight and then they do that and that's mm-hmm. why people stay together when they shouldn't um also alcohol it says that's why the bible says to be sober minded mm-hmm. you have to be very careful in relationships because yeah. they do things that they shouldn't when they're drinking alcohol mm-hmm. um so it's only good that, in marriage yes amen yeah. um so we're kind of almost done with time so some books and things and resources that i'm going to give people is definitely never fails it's, um by brian sumner he came to our church and he we have a ton of these so we would we're gonna want to do like when if ever morgan and vel do if they do like a class or something on marriage mm-hmm. or we'll do something like premarital counseling it's for <laughs> people who are engaged courting or single so vel and i she wanted to do something called like women's in waiting mm-hmm. um but 
I definitely want to go over like a book like this. It's a 30 day Mm -hmm. devotional and it just talks about different things. Like I think everyone should go through this if they are like engaged or anything like that or just courting. Um, But be careful. Don't do it alone because if you do Bible studies or stuff, that's very intimate. Like make sure (laughs) there's someone else there. But Mm. um, there's things talking about like um, unless you're married. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Money, you know, sex um love is patient and forgiveness like all these things another book that morgan and vel went through when they were doing marriage counseling with kevin and rachel and mm-hmm. then you guys did this when you did marriage counseling with austin and alex mm-hmm. um, is called two shall become one mm-hmm. preparation for engaged couples and refreshment for a marriage mm-hmm. um by john and reiner mann i don't know if that's how you pronounce it but that will be in the description below i'll put that there and another one is love and respect by mm. it's Edgar Rich, right? I think so. Um, yeah. I'll put that in the description below. Oh, so that's, that's for marriages that are maybe struggling mm-hmm. and stuff. It's teaching the women to respect their husbands and men to love their wives. Yeah. And when you do that, it kills the crazy cycle. Like, mm-hmm. well, he doesn't love me, so I don't respect him. Yeah. Or and even preparation, mm-hmm. preparation for marriage too. Yeah, so you don't get to caught do into that. that. Amen, yeah. amen. And so, um, I also want to go over a few of these. So this was. Um, something with uh, John Piper actually it was just questions for what does it say it says questions to ask when preparing for marriage so we're gonna do a little rapid fire with you guys Ooh. and do some so see what the answers are so this is kind of like a the marriage game you're, <laughs> you're almost up to three years so let's see how well um it's I'm not really thinker. it's not really we're questions. not saying we know everything no, by no, the way no, I'm <laughs> we're still learning it's a, yep. it's a joke newly married <laughs> newly married but um so the different things for it are theology do you guys agree on the same thing mm-hmm. worship and devotion they're both worship leaders um but in husband and wife like expectations with husbands and wives with social media they do not have social media praise god a lot of marriages are ruined because of mm-hmm. going back to old exes, because of social media, Facebook, mm. um, children, that's a big one, lifestyle, and entertainment, conflict, work, friends, and, you know, just having fun, like drinking, do you guys drink, health and sickness, and so, yeah, that's a lot, but mm. I'm going to just throw a few at you, Okay. and we'll, we'll spend five minutes on that. Okay, so we'll do one for each topic. So, first, we'll start in theology. So, um discover how you form your views what is the reasoning um believing process how do you handle the bible so val Mm. you're going to answer it for morgan and morgan you're going to answer it for val so how does val handle the bible and what are her (laughs) and like biblically i guess you guys don't have to answer for each other for this one but biblically what are your views on the bible like some Mm. things that are similar if that makes Mm. sense yeah well uh second corinthians 6 14 says not to be unequally yoked so i believe that this is talking about spiritual too yeah and i know it's talking about like business relationships but how much more uh a marriage relationship Mm -hmm. right because god says not to be divorced right so i mean most of the time there's certain circumstances but um he hates divorce. yeah yeah he hates divorce but what i'm saying um so how does she look at the bible you're saying um what are things you agree on like do you agree on um uh, are you yeah. guys uh complementarian this which oh. basically <laughs> means that men oh, yeah. and women are equal but different roles or egalitarian like an egalitarianism believe in that where it's like men and women like when if val wanted to be a pastor she could or no, she yeah. do this what do you guys believe I would in that say complementarian yeah. Uh, yep. because yeah the man is supposed to lead um but there's certain roles that doesn't mean that i just lead in everything and i don't listen to my wife like i listen to mm-hmm. you a, a lot for mm-hmm. yeah. and you give me a lot of wisdom, wisdom and it's because you're basing it all on the word of god so when i I'm confused or I'm just being led by emotion or just, uh, you know, impulses, I can ask you and, you know, maybe you're, you're more level-headed in those areas. So, and we can balance each other out like that. So, yeah, I believe in that. And then mm-hmm. what else? I was going to say, we believe, we believe that God's word is the ultimate authority. Amen. So mm-hmm. when we're, I don't know, 
my flesh doesn't always want to do this. It doesn't always yeah. do this. But when we read, we should be reading Amen. as this is God. God, this is your word. What do you want to change in me yeah. rather than us coming to God's word? And I'm going to try to fit your word, Lord, into my mold of thinking. But rather we should be transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we be able to test and approve what his will is, his perfect will will so um that's yeah that's definitely it's something that, yeah, it yeah that we believe it's infallible um it cannot be ch- we shouldn't change it we shouldn't add mm-hmm. to it we shouldn't take away uh, i was talking with mire about this she was teaching mm-hmm. me some terms um uh, we should look at it um like in a and your dad was saying this uh and correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> in a inductive, inductive way, not a deductive way where mm-hmm. we're just pulling and picking and choosing what yep. we want mm-hmm. and rather we are letting god um, speak to us the mm-hmm. points the things that he wants to speak to us in our lives so yeah. yeah and making sure that for sure you have the fundamentals down that you mm-hmm. believe that you know jesus is, is the, the lord right he's the only way yeah. and you believe in the trinity and that he he died for your sins and you know those are the basics you definitely have to get those things down yeah. mm-hmm. um but if you're going to church together see this is the thing yeah. if you're under the same yeah. teaching and you guys are both serving you should believe in the same things i mean there might be a few things like maybe your end time belief or whatever mm-hmm. is a little off which that can be different too because you need to also figure that out like what if someone <laughs> is mid-trip and they're a prepper like, yeah and you're not <laughs> see you gotta because, kind yeah, of because, yeah because like in marriage finances are a big thing too yep. so There's it's like one. if, if one do? spouse wants to use all the money for prepping but the other <laughs> one is like hey well, let's give it let's away. minister. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's give, give it away. away. Let's evangelize and use this money to to make disciples. Amen. You yeah. know, so That's yeah, good. I think money is a big issue too. Yeah. That yeah. you need to make sure that you have <laughs> have a plan for your fina- and do you finances tithe? too. Because yeah. one of them might think like, oh, I don't really yeah. believe in tithing. That's Old Testament. If they don't believe mm-hmm. in that that's a big deal because yep. mm-hmm. you probably you might not be blessed and like things can decay and the, yeah. the, the devour the, the and so it's just you need mm-hmm. to talk about these things um when you are engaged you know my advice and i'm not married but i would think this is my prayer so holding me accountable you read to the this. word of god and you but see have it on tape <laughs> to make sure that i am not preparing for a marriage as in a wedding not a marriage, mm-hmm. a wedding, but I'm preparing for my marriage. Yep. So mm-hmm. to, if you guys did my marriage counseling, that you, me and uh, my fiance are going through these questions before we're going through, hey, what mm-hmm. color should we do? Mm-hmm. Like how many bridesmaids? Yeah. Uh, Brides- bridesmaids. <laughs> bridesmaids. <laughs> no bridesmaids. <laughs> bridesmaids. Bridesmaids. Um, things like that is the least of our worries. Yeah. Um, yeah. But this is important and we're willing to walk away. Like yeah. we're willing to not marry each other there's some things where like everyone talks about there's the negotiables like okay you like football i do not like football like (laughs) people Mm -hmm. can say which actually i do like football but (laughs) there can be things like that but there's other things like non-negotiables like if someone's like hey i don't know if we have to go to church every sunday no that's Mm -hmm. if they if you don't agree on things like that if you don't agree with um other things too like how you go politics i mean yeah that can be a big if the one you want to marry is pro-abortion mm, and yeah. that's a big issue because that shows how you know how they look at life. the issue of life is that yep. you can see a lot of that other wrong. areas of politics of yeah you get a lot of other things wrong yeah, yeah. so it's yeah, good yeah to make sure even even those things that we don't want to deal with you know people mm-hmm. don't want to talk about politics but yeah you have to see certain see eye yeah. to eye in certain things yeah exactly and is this first is this the first question is what? this the first question? Mm-hmm. I like that it's the first question because yeah. it's important because everything else that follows mm-hmm. should be based on the word of God Amen. and the mm-hmm. way that you view it. And yeah. and it should be that it's the authority over all the areas of your life. Yeah. Finances, children, politics, like how you vote, how you worship, whatever you do. Like mm-hmm. you should be like, okay, God, what you say yeah. in your word is final mm-hmm. above what even my spouse says, you know, yeah. like so. And then if you both have that, if you both have that view towards God's word, then everything is just going to come together. Yeah. And there's going to be discussion and prayer in certain areas that maybe the God's word, maybe God's word isn't completely clear on. Mm-hmm. But that's something that you can grow in together as long as you fear the Lord and fear his words. And then you're yeah. in a mm-hmm. great spot. Yeah. And you should know how they're doing these things because that man should be being discipled by someone or has been discipled. And you should be too, to where you should be able to talk to the person to disciple them. It's like, hey, how are they doing in this area? You're not the one who should be figuring out these things. Like mm. they should have someone who 
is doing that for them, like men minister to men, mm-hmm. women minister to women. Mm-hmm. And the one after this is worship and devotion. So it's like they're how important is corporate worship, um, mm-hmm. participation in church, serving? Mm-hmm. How important is being in a small group or accountability, importance of worship in your life? Mm-hmm. And um, like even raising your hands, like do, are they someone who's who's not ashamed to worship? Um, talking about too, like witnessing and like mm-hmm. is your life a witness? Um, daily personal devotional practices. What does that look like? Your prayer mm-hmm. reading, memorizing scripture, things like that. Um, what would you? What would your family devotions look like? Would mm-hmm. you even do those? And um, just are we are we doing this now in an appropriate way? This is a mm-hmm. big, good question. Mm-hmm. Praying together. Should we be praying together before we're married? Should we be studying the Bible together? Which my advice would be no. Like I don't think you mm-hmm. should alone be studying the Bible together. Mm-hmm. Or doing that because it's very intimate. Like it brings mm-hmm. people together. Yes, when you're married, it's mm-hmm. so important to be praying. Like you guys would pray for each other, you know, like quickly. Yeah, yeah but we would pray on the phone every night. Yeah, but it's yeah. it's being careful, not talking about certain details mm-hmm. on the phone, mm-hmm. things that are inappropriate, things that you think, oh, mm-hmm. this will be good to talk about if there isn't a third person there. Mm-hmm. If there's someone like obviously like, well, God's there. But yeah. sometimes you struggle with not fearing God. Like we all mm-hmm. struggle with that. So it's good to have that. When that person there with you when you're talking about intense questions like mm-hmm. your past yeah. or mm-hmm. um yeah sex or things like that mm-hmm. do not do that alone and like, because yeah and like we would be alone cool. but people would be able to see us so yes. that, that we're not doing anything Amen. that we shouldn't so and savory yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and and it's not it's not just to be legalistic like not kissing before marriage some people maybe they can do it you know mm-hmm. but i would say it's not wise mm-hmm. right too, oh, it's and too it's not like you're ungodly and your marriage is set on a, a super bad foundation because you kissed before you got married it's just unwise what if you don't marry it's them? like it's That's like weird. yeah it break up yeah it would be kind of weird you know and, very weird <laughs> and so it's like you don't want what to do does that. someone have to leave the church yeah. and you don't want to have to do that no you know yeah. there's you might you know be dating someone or courting someone but not might not work out but by the grace of god even though vel and i were such good friends and we were courting if god said no like we would we wouldn't have shame like Mm -hmm. oh man i went took it too far Mm -hmm. it's like yeah maybe the emotions were there but we could cut it off because if it's not god like by the grace of god we didn't do anything that pushed the limit Mm -hmm. and what's the verse about treating um, like a brother. Yeah, treating you like for the Sister. men, treat your sis- sisters in crisis. It's all or, purity. And yeah, like, um, treat them like treat a, s- a young maiden. It talks about. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, but but we know that yeah. God wants us to treat each other with honor and mm-hmm. respect, mm-hmm. and uh, not to get involved in sexual Amen. morality. So yeah, yep, you want to do that with your brother or sister. So do not do not yeah. cross that line because they are your brother and sister in Christ until mm-hmm. the day you say do and you're married. Um. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we're over time but <laughs> there's other things about children how many children you want to have how far apart adoption we do another one yeah we'll do another yeah. one lifestyle <laughs> entertainment all that fun stuff so we'll do another podcast but i think it was good just to do like what we did just saying how the number one and the most important thing like there's so many things like you can go over with and whatever and whatnot but the most important is that foundation with Christ. Like if you don't yourself have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, what if your spouse died and then you Mm. based everything on them and then your relationship with God and saw people doubt God. And then Mm -hmm. it's just, it gets really scary that idolatry that you could have with your spouse. Mm -hmm. So like Morgan Velt, they love each other. They're so thankful for each other, but they don't need each other. And that Mm. makes it so beautiful. And people are like, Oh, that sounds so bad. Like, but they're not, obsessed in a bad way where it's like oh, mm. if i don't have morgan with me right now like right you can be on one side serving in the children's ministry and morgan's on the other side in the foyer ministering to a man and you're okay because when you come together at home you're one you're with each other mm. i mean you're you're one like the two become one flesh but the cool thing is that you're not like so obsessed to where yeah if someone had to do something else you're not like heartbroken or whatever mm. but I love how my dad says, if you're doing something, like example, if Morgan was going to have like a guy's night or something, make sure it counts. Make sure you're not just Mm. doing it because I want to hang with the boys. Yeah, I just want to get away from my wife. Mm. 
my dad my mom and dad they always said to each other if you're doing something make sure it's counting like for the lord unto mm-hmm. the lord mm-hmm. like it's giving mm-hmm. glory that's to good. god and that's, that's how mm-hmm. you can do that but that was yeah. a side note but do you have any closing thoughts for our listeners it doesn't even have to be exactly what we're saying but mm. anything you feel like the holy spirit is leading you to I, say yeah just for whether you're single married or um or just you know in that engagement period put god first mm-hmm. you know that's I know it's cliche and every, but a lot of people don't do it, you know. Yeah. So you have to be reminded to do that to put God first. Don't idolize, like Mariah was saying. Don't idolize a person. Don't idolize. Maybe you're you've been married, but now you're putting all your hope in your kids, and you're kind of rejecting. Mm. You know, it's like don't idolize your kids. Don't idolize your husband. But if you put God first and everything else will follow. So exactly. you gotta do that. Yep. I was just thinking as you're talking Jesus first, which is what you mm-hmm. what you yeah. said. Jesus first and I was thinking of the verse, um, I don't know exactly where it is, but I think it's maybe Psalm thirty two. I don't know. But it says um, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And that yeah. word, I say this a lot, but that word delight there means um, being basically flexible, making yourself pliable to God and his will. And as you delight yourself in him and as you find your everything in him, you're going to realize that Jesus is all you need. So mm-hmm. you're going to have the desires of your heart. Mm-hmm. And and as you delight yourself in him and make yourself pliable to his will, then he's going to start changing your heart to desire the things of him and is of his kingdom and if Mm -hmm. marriage is something that's going to further his kingdom then that is going to going to be the case for you but um if that's not if being single is something that's going to further his kingdom even more like there's so many great men and women of god who um who called to singleness and they were able to do so much so much for the glory of god because they didn't because that would have been a distraction to them Mm -hmm. and at the end of their lives like one Example is Gladys Elward, and at the end of her life, people asked her, weren't you dissatisfied or weren't you not happy that you weren't married? She's like, no, I, at the end of my life, I'm content mm. because mm-hmm. I, cause God satisfied me and I did his will. And I don't know if that's what she said, but basically mm-hmm. that's her heart. Um, so yeah, so just mm-hmm. delight yourself in the Lord and Jesus first and Matthew six thirty three, seek first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. Um, and in that that chapter is talking about food and clothing, but I believe it also can be other things that you care about. So, um, and but one yeah. more thing is that um, because sometimes people are like, okay, yeah, I, I know to do those things, but but you're not doing it. So mm-hmm. a practical thing is when I was when she was talking about church, going yeah. to church. Yeah. That's actually that's what this means, church. Yeah, this means shout out to <laughs> Ecclesia. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Chad. Chad, Chad yeah. made it. Yeah. Upstream so threads. um yeah, upstream threads. Put that in the description com. below. Is that hopefully that's right. Mm-hmm. But we'll fix it. <laughs> um but Ecclesia, go to church. Yep. Don't neglect meeting with one another. Yep. And so that's a practical step. Mm-hmm. So if Sir, you're like yep. If you're like, man, my marriage seems like it's failing Mm. or man, I just feel like I'm just searching for a spouse Mm. or whatever. Just start going to church. Find that godly counsel. Get those friends around you so that you can ask those questions. And, And so that's a practical step that you guys can do starting tomorrow well Amen. today is saturday but this is coming out tuesday so yeah <laughs> so, but come Amen. come on wednesdays right yeah wednesday, wednesday at seven uh listen to this this is just a part this isn't church no. this is just extra um but yeah come to church and get involved so Amen. Yeah. Amen. hey well thank you mo and Val. you guys yeah. are awesome thank you thank for you, Mar- not even knowing the questions to get answered, but that just shows that you were led by the Holy Spirit, and I'm thankful for you guys, and I love you so much. And I love you. I love having you as my brother and sister. But thank you guys so much for joining us on Calvary Conversations. If you haven't already, please make sure to like, subscribe, and share this video. If you would like to listen to us wherever you get your podcast, just type in Calvary Conversations. Also, you can check out our behind the scenes on Instagram by just checking or by looking for Calvary Conversations. That'll be in the description below. And thank you so much to our sponsor, Mission Heating and Cooling. Please make sure to check out their website in the description below. And I think that's it. But I'll see you guys at church and we'll see you next week. God bless.